Alrighty, welcome back. You are still hanging up with us right here on the hashtag Power Talk TV show. And as well, uh, there's a question of the day right there. Let me just read it to you just in case you have no idea. We are asking you, how do you handle feelings of guilt and shame? And literally that is uh, leading to the conversation we're having right here, a journey of healing and forgiveness. And I'm still hanging out with Tweba and Lois. Now, uh, before we went on a break, we are actually talking about how, you know, there's a person who is triggered and they'll be like, if I meet you again, nope, don't even continue. You're reminding me of something that I don't want to get there anymore. But generally, life is all about pain management. Uh, I, I remember, I think it was, there's, there's this uh, new anchor from CNN, and it was Cuomo. She used to have a show called The Cuomo. She, I think she's related to a governor called Cuomo, but mm -hmm. in the US. And uh, during her, his sign off, Wakati was living in CNN, he said, she has learned that life is all about pain management. But also, how do you manage pain so that it leads to a place where you are? You have a free heart because I believe if, if you carry you know they usually say uh, there's a certain pain that keeps on festering in people's lives that keeps on appearing when they're mature and whatnot so how do you handle general life pain that can make you a free person so that you easily let go you can easily let go whenever something crazy happens maybe I can start with you Lois I think the only thing you just need to do is set boundaries with yourself it, they don't have to favor any other person it has to start from you because no. the moment you know how far is far you yeah. cannot just allow anything that tags along to get into your heart and that one is gets so easy for you because any other time people are going to offend you and they don't know what triggers your anger issues yeah, yeah. right uh, now you've mentioned uh, the word trigger uh, maybe Trevor uh, most of us actually are triggered by l so many things uh, you could be at work and somebody walks in that you don't want to see again and maybe because it's something they did to you last year and maybe you never had that courage or the capacity or the space or even time to say hey but the way what you did last year disgusted me but you held on to it and then they pop up again in another pro maybe at all you can put you know. and then another person similar like that pops up and it keeps on making you angry yeah. and you know you they're holding on to pain and anger and resentment is it possible to totally alleviate that kind of experience I think, can I say like maybe 90%? Mm -hmm. Because the thing, the thing about triggers and the way they work is that it's, it's also a neurological thing. Your, right. br yeah, your brain, a trigger essentially is like a sign of danger that your brain recognizes and yeah. then it activates the emergency system. So All that's right. why you find when you're triggered, suddenly you are extremely angry, emotions are very high, it's yeah. like your legs are ready to run or you're ready mm -hmm. to punch someone. You see, those yeah. are now the signs of the emergency system going online. Right. So I think it's, it's, it comes a lot of practice. Mm -hmm. It comes a lot, a lot of practice. Because even like for someone like me, till this day I'm still, like I'm seven years into therap my own therapy and I'm still managing triggers. Right. But I think that knowledge of the trigger really helps. Yeah. And then understanding that, mm -hmm. as much as it's an emergency system and can be activated immediately, right. you have a choice. Mm. Mm -hmm. So like, in like, I love that example you've given. Let's say you transfer on another company in Guinea and then there's another person there who's reminding you of this one. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's uh -huh. understanding that, hey, I'm triggered. Right. This person has reminded me of this other person who did this and this. Mm. But this person is different. Mm. That threat is not here. Right. So but it's hard to see that difference if you're carrying this filter. Exactly. Now you see that's why I'm, that's why I'm really emphasizing the mm -hmm. thing of awareness. Just yeah, become awareness, aware yeah. that this trigger is here for me. Mm -hmm. I am most likely going to act, act out towards this current person, yet right. the original offender is somewhere else yeah. mm -hmm. or they're not around. So yeah. become aware of that. Mm -hmm. And then there's something that I talk to clients a lot about called opposite action. Oh, opposite action. Yeah, uh -huh. so when you feel that anger, when you feel that irritation, that deep frustration, what, what the, or the intention you have there is to act out someone, mm -hmm. to hurt them, mm -hmm. to, you know, to act out the anger. What yeah. is the opposite action of that be? Mm -hmm. Be kind. You be know? kind. Yeah, uh -huh. and you see that even in that kindness, doing mm -hmm. that opposite action, you also retrain your brain that, right. hey, even if we have this filter that we are carrying, right. we can now choose to act differently mm. even when we are triggered right and the more you practice that the easier it becomes mm. at some point now you can identify triggers you might feel your heart racing kidogo you do breathing exercise you say okay fanya ivi fanya ivi you know that's yeah. that's coming you say fanya ivi yeah the osa yeah you say fanya ivi <laughs> then you're like okay so i'm okay right i'm okay mm -hmm. then you say okay you know what i was triggered for a moment but i can yeah. move on with my day i've come down i've done breathing exercises opposite action or any mm -hmm. other thing I can move on with my day. But it yeah. really just comes with practice. And you have to keep being aware of the trigger when it comes up. Mm. Do something about it. Yeah. Anytime it happens, just keep practicing yeah. that. And I think like, from what you've said, I've, I've understood it's self-awareness. 
yeah. that it's a powerful it's a powerful skill literally totally. just being aware that if it happens like this oh my goodness it can take me there but i'm gonna stand my ground and yeah. definitely i can make it through mm -hmm. now our stories now self-sabotage uh, i also believe it comes from pain uh, there's people who still are hard on themselves for things they did you know maybe they were forced to do something that personally if they were in the same mind or if they were to relook again and start walking that journey they wouldn't do it but you know they did it because of maybe money maybe they were trying to save a life but they they're still holding on to that anger uh, do you feel like it's possible for such a person to ever reach at a place where they'll be happy again <laughs> it has reminded me of this song by Kambua. she sings and talks about she's free again she's happy again I think it's a gospel song is it possible to be happy again to be free again to start again and you know enjoy life to the fullest and totally let go yeah, I think it's so easy because like everything about mental wellness starts from you. Right. If you are positive with it, then we can have it. Because right. I, I'm thinking about it in a perspective where um, there's this one thing I've been doing for the longest time and no one can help me overcome that yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. But I have to sit down and decide I need to work it out from my end. Mm -hmm. And the moment I make a decision about it, I'm ready to walk out of that situation. Right. But anytime I'm holding back, I have yeah. the fear of what is going to happen, how will people feel about this, if I have to open up about something I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with, how will people feel, how are they going to take me. I mean, do not go anywhere. It mm -hmm. has to start from you. Like, mm -hmm. You just need to be the first priority and you need to come first. Yeah. Then other things are going to work your way mm -hmm. in the best way they can. Because I'm, I'm thinking about someone maybe who is struggling with something like masturbation. Right. That is someone Can who that be as a result of trauma as well? Masturbation? Yeah, yeah because, because I have... Uh -huh. I think I had a client one week ago, mm -hmm. and I was so shocked how it came about. They were living in a single room with the parents. Wow. Uh -huh. And the, with the sisters and the brothers, and right. he was very young. Yes. And he just came to realize what happens, and as he grew, he wanted to discover, wait, I see them do this, I want to do this. Wow. Yeah. By the time he got to that space, mm. it was messy because most of the time that young man was spending time with his dad because the mom right. was away. Mm. And he just saw everything happen and was like, ah, why not try this? And let me tell you, before he walked out of that, it was a whole situation. Right. Because he came, confessed to me, and was like, you see, in, in masturbation, we start from when did this start? What right. triggers you? Mm -hmm. uh, bef so that we can overcome what you need to do, all those steps. And I was right. like, it is not someone else. It, it's you and your dad. You cannot go and face your dad and tell him you came to realize those mm. things happened from him. Right. It has to start from you. And I was right. like, the best thing you can do, now that you have the knowledge and you know how far it can take you as much as you think about it and you want to practice it, yes. you just need to start somewhere. Like, right. I want to work it out. I want mm. to leave this. I need mm. to meet someone who ca I can talk to and even open up to because yes. the first solution is talking about it. And right. then you, 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 you'll be there think feeling um, I'm in a free world yeah. and I'm vulnerable to someone who can actually help me. Right. Yes. And, and, and Toba, before we just get to the comments, I feel like uh, in, in this day and age, people are bound, and let me use the word bondage. People are in bondage of things maybe that have been self-induced. Uh, some of them, they are still carrying experiences mostly from their parents, their childhood, etc. Mm -hmm. And for a person to be free, like she has said, uh, you need to make a conscious decision of I'm intentionally going to start yeah. stopping this behavior. Mm -hmm. Because I also believe behavior makes your character. And that's how people perceive you out there. Mm -hmm. And it starts maybe from an experience that you saw, like from the example you've given, mm. and then you start acting out, and then it becomes a behavior, and then finally it makes your character. And people out there could be seeing you differently and judging you, but they just don't know the story. Yeah, they don't yeah. know the story. Mm. Right. All right, do we have the feedback? Uh, please, uh, we have asked you a question of the day. Uh, let me just get to it. How do you handle uh, feelings of guilt and shame? And maybe <laughs> I'd also love to hear from you, by the way, uh, after we read the comments, how can a person handle uh, feelings of guilt and shame? Uh, Franklin Ward and Asema following, I face it head on. I wish you'd have said it how you face it head on, Franklin Ward, Judy. And then Simba Brian, Asema watching live, uh, live from Lesos, Nandi County. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Glenn Blaine and Sema watching uh, live from Vihiga County. Shout out to Vihiga Massive as well. Uh -huh. And it was Cleopatra Belfast Clear and Sema Unapambana Tuna Hali and Yoko believing that tomorrow is another day. 
Wow, that's a lot of uh, strength, by the mm. way, for you to say that. Uh, Sima Boaz and Asema Eldred well represented Chamge. <laughs> Titus Ombeta Nasema watching from Lanet, Nakuru County. Ose Nakuru, massive thank you so much. Uh -huh. The question of the day is how do you handle feelings of guilt and shame? And then I need to Obed Obed and say, I knew a kitchen, Jew, Nalisha Migu, Alafunaskiza Mziki. Wow, music is your therapy, right? I love that. I love that, Obed. Uh, Frank uh, Kiga and Nasema watching from Kangemi. Shout out to Kangemi. Where, where? And then Kennedy Jumba Asirigo and Nasema, good evening. Good evening to you, Kennedy. Where are you watching us from? Ebutuambie. And then Susie Kesha and I said, I tuned in from Thika Lois uh, Akusalimie. Definitely at Akusalimie <laughs> in just a bit to Kienda. Okay, Julius Murega and I said, Pamoja Sana. Uh, Moshi Kali and I said, following live from Changara Teso. Right, yeah, continue to interact with us on the Ashdag Part of TV show. The question is again, how do you handle feelings of guilt? And Shem, and let me just throw that to Lois since Ume mentioned you up the comment section. <laughs> How can a person handle uh, feelings of guilt and shame? Because I believe they're related anyways. If you're feeling shameful, definitely you're guilty of something. And it could be maybe imposed an experience or maybe an encounter. Let me start with myself. Right. Anytime I've ever found myself in a space where I feel shame, mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with any other person. Right. It's me. And that's the only way I can be able to deal with it. Because mm. at times we think I can the only way I can get over it is when people justify it like see if you're a huku kosea because shame is basically something you never expected to do, but it has happened but it has been interpreted differently by someone else. Yeah. But how how should I dwell in what people say concerning me? Mm. Because maybe it comes from a place of self-esteem. Because I believe uh, self-esteem also plays a huge role in terms of mental grit. You know, you feeling brave enough, courageous, and not like um, swimming in that space of like, what are they thinking about me now? Because I believe it takes, it takes a lot of mental gravitas yeah. to feel confident and brave and like, ah, I did that. Forget it, man. I'm still here. It's <laughs> life. It takes a lot of <laughs> mental grit <laughs> to feel like that and even say that. So probably this person has some facets of them that are broken, now in terms of self-esteem. Do, don't you think so, Toba? Uh, poss possibly, yeah. Mm -hmm. And for me, the way I like to look at like, guilt and shame, I like to see like, guilt as I have done something wrong, and yeah. shame as I am something wrong. For wow. me, that's how mm -hmm. I've come to understand them from my own experience. Right. And for me, whenever shame comes up, mm -hmm. I try to check, okay, Am I actually wrong? Like, as a person, am I wrong? Mm. Or is it that I'm just a human being who made a mistake? Mm. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. and he, or am I just a human being who made the wrong decision? Yeah. It's very important to distinguish between the two because a lot of times you are not a bad person. Yeah. yeah. You are a person who did a wrong thing. Mm. Mm. And, and sometimes you're not even aware it was a wrong thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you yeah. just, you just yeah. make an honest mistake. Do any being a damn or two. And maybe you are blamed for it. You see. And it permanently damages you. Now right. that's where the shame comes in. You start to feel like I am the mistake. I am the wrongness mm. in the thing that I did. But I think yeah. it's so important to distinguish the two so that you yeah. know, okay, you know what? And this is now where that self-esteem comes in. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure that your self-esteem is not in question. Ukifanya kitumbaya, make sure your self-esteem is removed from the equation. Mm -hmm. And then mm. now look at the action you did. And wow. say, you know what? I disrespected this person. I hurt this person. Sometimes even about yourself. I disrespected myself. I hurt myself. Can I apologize? Can I make amends? Yeah. So that your self-esteem remains untouched. You know that you are just a human being who's trying. But the action you did is the problem. Yeah. And actions can be corrected. Right. Behavior can be corrected. Mm. So for me, usually that's what I try to do even when it comes to myself. I try not to reach the point of saying whoever you're a bad person. Because mm. yeah. I also know what that does to me mentally. Yeah. 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 The moment I say that, I spiral. Now, yeah. that's when I start self-sabotaging. I'm like, you know what? I'm right. bad. So what? Yeah. Because I'm bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm bad. Okay, I'll show everyone. <laughs> but see, I'm not. Yeah. I don't need to reach that point where mm -hmm. I'm even starting to destroy everything else. Mm. If yeah. I did one wrong thing, two wrong things, address right. those ones. Mm. Make amends. Apologize. And yeah. move forward. Right. Uh, maybe we can also now talk about the importance of why should I forgive? 
and how will it lead to healing? But then also, like you said, uh, you know, sometimes uh, when you experience some of these things that we go through, uh, I believe Gen they are saying Gen Zs have a lot of mental grit as compared to millennials. I don't know if that's true, though. Mm -hmm. But you guys will tell me. They feel like Gen Zs are quite strong. They can stand up for themselves. They say they feel sick, and that's what's up. You can't challenge it. <laughs> But uh, millennials for us born 1990 to the maybe uh, late uh, 1998 are still under control like we can zip and zap but while I'm depressed in period there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, let's talk about uh, why it's important for a person to forgive and how does it reflect in their personal uh, let's say progress in life. Yeah, does it reflect at some point when you start now letting go? does even your personal appearance change because because i believe holding on to so many things it's sometimes you know there's somebody who said it's spiritual like it's baggage that's just mm -hmm. seated there ukona mizigo mingi there's a person who said ukona mizigo mingi hata wewe ndio naweza naweza kuanzia wapi is it possible to for a person to unload this mizigo mingi hadi aanze ku make progress in life we can start with the loss i think it's so easy to forgive uh -huh. because the moment you forgive uh -huh. It's on your. It's it's for your own benefit. Doesn't right. have to be the other person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because most of the time we feel if if someone made a wrong thing to me, the only way they can forgive me is me approaching them. But right. you see, there are people who are unapproachable even after they have mm -hmm. done a wrong thing to you. What do you do? You mm -hmm. first delete with it on your own. Right. Or even you'll have done something and they're not even aware they hurt you, but you're feeling bad about it. And let me tell you, that is going to kill you. Because yeah. you'll maybe in a instance where you're in a church, mm -hmm. you're serving with someone, they hurt, they hurt you, they have to preach, you'll have to see them. Yeah. And you're like, oh my God, what are you telling us? But You they, dismiss everything that they're doing. Yeah, but the But this person has a right though. They have a right to feel like that. Yeah, they have, but mm -hmm. it has to start with me. Mm -hmm. The question is, is that person aware that they hurt me? They could uh, not be aware about it. Maybe you can tell me. Yeah, you can tell me that you're sure. Right. But if you're sure about it and mm. those people cannot even get to a point where you can talk about it, mm. first forgive yourself. Right. Anything else can wait. Because maybe they have their own seasons. There are people who take a very long time before they forgive you because they have that bitterness. They cannot just imagine how you did it because they have a perfect image mm. of you rather than coming and talk about it. Mm. Let's because I, I feel most of the time, even in people who break up in friendships, just mere friendships. It's because you feel mm. I cannot apologize first. Oh wow! In that perspective, of <laughs> my ego is up there, so I'm going to be seen as a lesser weak. person. Yeah, it's mm. going to make you, uh, make me a lesser person. But for right. me, anytime yeah. I hurt you, I'm going to be very quick to say sorry. Yeah. And it's not just saying sorry; it's saying why are you sorry? Because yeah. at times you're like, I'm sorry. What next? What mm. are you sorry for? By the way, yeah, because yeah. you walk through that path very fast. I'm sorry. Mm. See, Paul bus. <laughs> is that an enough reason <laughs> then to even like, forgive? Why are you sorry? But the moment you say, I apologize for this and this, it yeah. makes you feel that person has had time to think about what they did and they are really sorry about what they did. Right. Yes. But you know, there's people who also bring it, ah, sasa kitu kama hiyo pia wewe. But also when you look at it, people process things differently. To you, it could be a molehill. To him, it's a mountain. Uh, Tweba. Yeah. And also, still on that regard, why should a person forgive and how does it re reflect in the normal facets of their well-being? Especially when it comes to even making life progress. I think, it just forgive for yourself. Mm. And mm. even for me, this is a lesson I've had to learn the hard way. Because mm -hmm. I was one of those people who could not for very many years of my life. Right. And reached a point where this person is living their life. Mm -hmm. In fact, they're doing very well. They're very successful. But for me, I'm still carrying that pain. And you see them. You, know, you, you see, see them you every day. I know. <laughs> every day. How do you know? You ask God. Yes, good. So God. <laughs> Yanni. You, know, you start even questioning Are you your punishing own me, God? <laughs> yeah, I said, why are you punishing me? And I was the one who was wronged. No. Right. So you go through that process. But I think, uh -huh. I think that, that thing of like forgiveness is for you. Yeah. It starts. It starts from here. Right. You have to realize that forgiveness is not about letting that person go after they wronged you, yeah. but it's about. I like the the, thi the image you painted of like burdens. Yeah. Yes. It's about you unburdening yourself. Right. It's about you deciding I'm not going to drink this poison, expecting mm. them to, to die. die. Yeah, because behalf. the burden mm. is really on you. Mm. And sometimes, actually, you know, the thing is, I think also we have a certain image of forgiveness, that forgiveness is about, I have to let you go, you know, yeah. I have to make sure justice is not served. But forgiveness yeah. is about me mm. realizing that, okay, you know what, I was hurt, full stop. Right. It's okay. That mm. one is a fact. Mm. 
Mm. But now that I was hurt, is there a way that I can let it go yes. so that I can look forward? Mm -hmm. You know, mm. just like that thing I'd said of looking down. Can I stop obsessing and constantly thinking about this thing that this person did yeah. and look up and see that, by the way, my life is bigger than this thing yeah. that this person did to me? Right. It takes time. It's mm. a process. No and it's problem. a journey. Yeah. It's a and you journey. walk it. Yeah. But remember also the way we can sometimes say the practice of forgiveness. Mm. But then sometimes forgiveness is an everyday thing. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> unamka every day you think this person is yeah. You remember, you know what? Mm. I can't keep carrying this you around. You have to come to work and yeah. work under them. Yeah. Mm. I can't keep carrying this around. Mm. So what do I do? When I think of how this person hurt me, I say, okay, you know what? They mm. hurt me. There's nothing I can change about that, but I can let it go. Right. And you, you actively choose even in your mind. I'm mm. letting it go. I'm letting it go. Today I'm consciously choosing no violence. Yes. <laughs> Today no violence. No violence. Yeah. If I feel right. the urge for violence within me, I will mm. do something else. Yes. You know, because there are so many ways that you can cope with those feelings, even when they right. come up. Mm -hmm. But it's really a practice, a daily thing. You have to do it as much as you need to until you feel like I'm at the point where I've let them go. It's yeah. actually just such a practice, by the way. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Thanks for that. Uh, Lois, uh, I understand also sometimes forgiveness does not mean reconnecting with your aggressor or yes. your assailant. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I heard that from Ian Lashes, Oprah Winfrey's best friend. They usually have this show called Super Soul Sundays. They purely talk about healing, forgiveness, and burdening, and spirituality. So do you guys believe sometimes forgiveness does not mean reconnecting with a person, staying with them, chilling, but you can forgive and be fine and yeah, that's what's up. In your heart, you know you're free, but it is what it is, yeah. I think that is me now. Oh, that is you. Yeah, this is me. <laughs> what I've just exactly <laughs> said. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The fact that we had disagreements with you, mm -hmm. and I forgive you, doesn't mean you get back to where we were. Because oh, wow. people tend yeah. to, th to feel mm -hmm. after they hurt me and I forgive them, they can still get back. And right. the people who give the opportunity to get back to you, even after they have hurt you, remember mm -hmm. they have the tactic on things that hurt you the most. Mm -hmm. Even like instances like someone who kills you. Right. Like someone you've lived with like for five years. Mm -hmm. But just the moment you forgive them and you give them a leeway mm -hmm. and allow them to feel everything else is running the way we used to do them, yes. that's the moment they kill you. Because you never see it coming. You're like, ah, we are good. Mm -hmm. After we are good, what's next? No. I know we are good. I forgive you. Forgive me. But stay right. there. Mm. Yeah. Right. Uh, does it also uh, change uh, maybe how you view people? Because I believe also uh, forgiveness, now that you're healing, it gives you a different perspective, a panoramic view of how to view people because you start now seeing people for who they are. And I believe that's when you finally arrive at the destination called healing. You start viewing people for who they are, not for what they do or the things that surround them. Right? Yeah. Mm. Uh -huh. Yeah. I, actually, that's what happens. And you see that's, I think the best place to be, even in relationships with people, is mm -hmm. take what the reality. Right. I like this example that you keep going around of like when someone hurts you. Right. When a person hurts you and you forgive them, you right. have to be aware. I like the, the example that she gives that now they have the tactics to hurt you. Right. Until this person has shown that mm. they, are with, they have changed their behaviors. Yeah. Right. Reconciliation, don't consider it until mm. this person, that should be like the, the ticket for them to get back into your life. Yeah, until they see the mistake, right? Until yeah, they, they see the mistake talk about and they it. are changing right. their behavior. W what if you giving them your peace of mind and reminding them, be like, hey, you know what? You did this to me. Did you not see <laughs> it? <laughs> did you not see it? You're again talking to me. Are you crazy? Because uh, uh, we've seen that happen. Mm -hmm. We've seen that yes. happen. The person is totally not aware, yeah. but you've forgiven them. Mm -hmm. But here they are again. So is it correct for you to give them your peace of mind and be like, I'm warning you, if you ever do this again, I don't know where you'll meet me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I think that one is now an individual choice. All right. In some cases, it's uh -huh. worth it for you to communicate that to them. Mm. All right. In some cases, uh, it is actually Still not enough. worth your energy. All right. Because, especially uh -huh. like, let's say, Ali Kukosea the first time and you had that conversation and you told them, mm -hmm. you did this to me, you hurt me like this. Okay. They know. Right. You don't need to, and especially if it's an adult. For me, I always tell people, as long as they have an ID, they're above 18. <laughs> yeah. You do not have to treat them like a child who has to be told many yes. time and time again what you did. Yeah. They know what they did, mm -hmm. and you have, actually, you have every right to hold your boundaries. Right. Yeah. Actually, pe well, most people actually it. don't understand stories and boundaries. Mm -hmm. But also, uh, how you communicate your boundaries really matters. Because you can say, uh, you, you could be in a setup where if you say, if you cross me like this, the consequences are blah, 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 blah. And then maybe the environment will be like, then we can't have you here if this is your boundary. So I think also maybe making boundaries that are maybe understandable or just defined.
that are welcoming to other people that can you know help you you know survive in an environment where that's a little bit uh, constrained don't you think so Lois I feel at times uh, one of the things that one of the things that can mess you up is your tongue your tongue yes okay I feel as much as you're making those boundaries let them see the boundaries don't speak them out all right because but maybe you need to communicate like just cordially and be like, you know what <laughs> I'm Lois and if you do this <laughs> Maybe you're the boss, you're fired. <laughs> if you cross this one, <laughs> it's down for you. <laughs> but you see, we are in a state where people block that. And they're right. like, I, I, I heard you. Mm. But they went to like, I don't like this. Like, you don't have even to talk about it. They're like, just mm. a night one time, they're like, Nikubaya. <laughs> <laughs> like, the moment you create Danger. a mechanism for yourself and yeah. to mark boundaries within yeah. your space, right. people will know. Like, uh -huh. let me give you an example. Have you ever not? walked into a space and you can feel some kind of cold mm, cold energy yeah cold <laughs> energy uh, i think you've experienced that mm. and the person the person is not even there or that person is, is even getting inside and you're like who is they're just parking the I car know, outside <laughs> who is about to get in like so and so you're like hey who has arrived now <laughs> even don't know that person but you're like mm. well uh -huh. it's okay right and that can be really toxic extremely toxic but also uh, i believe it's called healthy boundaries making healthy boundaries to balance the equation mm -hmm. in that they also favor other people it's mm -hmm. called like Villanasema. it's me and it's me and nobody else ah. <laughs> right <laughs> right to well okay sometimes sometimes it's it's more important to consider yourself uh -huh. and other times it's important to consider others i think mm -hmm. it's it's a uh, you just have to you have to really practice being able to see where that balance is because actually, I'll be honest with you, there are some times where my boundary cannot include other people. All right. Sometimes yeah. my boundary has to do with my physical safety. Me, right. If I consider other people, I could die here, you know. Yeah. And sometimes you just have to put that, that strong boundary and say, okay, for me, this is what I can allow, this is what I can't allow. Right. There are other situations now you see, like for the example you're giving of a workplace, mm. it's important to consider others, but mm. only to a certain extent. Mm. You also don't right. want to overextend your boundaries to the point where now you are people pleasing. Anybody, yeah. anybody, anything anybody says, you say yes, yes, no problem. Yeah. So Maybe it's your boss. <laughs> no, even with your boss, imagine. Can you build a boundary with the boss and you say, can. hey, yeah. your assignment CND. You can't imagine you can. How? Can your life depends on this job. Come on now. <laughs> consider the nature of that relationship. Or the nature yeah, of the, the relationship. Nature of, because, yeah, we understand there's a hierarchical relationship uh -huh. there. This is your boss. Your mm. job is in their hands. Your livelihood. Mm. Your plan is there. They're the ones deciding. Right. So if you're uncomfortable with something, think about, okay, how can I tell my boss in a respectful way yeah. that for me I can do this? Also, mm. sometimes, you know, even in boundaries and relationships, yeah. sometimes we say not only set the boundary, but give an alternative. Mm. Right, so, like, yeah. you can tell your boss, hey, mm -hmm. me, e assignment says yenda, but mm. I prefer to go for this one. So that mm. even with you setting your boundary, you're also yeah. making it advantageous for the other person. Right. You're telling your boss, hey, boss, me, this one, I can do maybe it's like a, something up to do with your faith or your beliefs. Right, so if yeah. for this one I'm not comfortable, mm -hmm. yeah. however, I would be comfortable doing this other thing. Mm -hmm. So you see yeah, your yeah. boss is seeing, sure, 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 okay, yeah. uh -huh. but right. I can see that they're willing to do yeah. something else. All right. In a case like that, it's win-win and you've held your boundaries. And that's it. And yeah. literally it's understood. Yeah. I, we have to go. We are literally out of time. So definitely in five <laughs> seconds and five seconds, uh, how can people get to interact with you and what would you want people to understand from this conversation you've had and where can they find you? This is your camera okay. in under 30 <laughs> seconds. Yeah. Okay. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube. I'm a content creator, so you can find me any of those places. And I think what I'd want you to go home with, where, or wherever you are, is that self-forgiveness is for you. Work on it slowly, and if you need the help of a professional, you can reach out to any of us or any other person you see online. But it's something that's doable, and it's for you, not right. for anyone else. Mm -hmm. uh, Lois? What would you want people to take from this conversation and how can they also get to interact with you? The only way you can be in a position to love yourself more and be aware of things that are happening in your life is the moment you separate emotions and reality and know that you come first. Yeah. Right. So you can find me on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. My name is Lois Rengue. Right. Do you guys have numbers? Do you guys give you numbers, by the way? <laughs> Do you? You can find them on our social media. On your social media. Yeah. yeah. Nice. I like answering that. My guest in the house say, hey, man, say, when I look at the company number. But it's all right. This, I feel like this conversation has just started. I wish we'd have a part two. But anyways, thank you guys so much. You guys have really killed it. And I love your sentiment.
Thank you. Thank and you. Karibuni Thank you. Sana. I can't wait guys to see you at the top and also see more people get help because we live in a very crazy, messed up world. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Thank Karibuni you Sana. All right. And uh, you can find this episode on our YouTube channel at uh, Y244 channel, as well as may maybe some of the highlights as well on our Instagram, Facebook, and X at Y244 channel underscore parlay in Instagram. Verified with a blue check mark. And personally, you can check me out at Brian one at Brian Sakwa 101. Not Brian 101. Brian Sakwa 101 everywhere. That's my uh, social media platform. And we love you for watching today. We'll definitely see you next time right here. Please uh, ensure that you say hello to Cheryl. She'll be back next time right here. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Why two five four? Imagine.